So here's a quick video showing the functionality of the Scale Master plugin for ZBrush 4R7. So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up and I have the Scale Master plugin loaded in over here. If you want some information on how Scale Master functions, you can just come over here and click this icon here and you'll get a little cheat sheet. So this will have a link to this video you're watching now. It also has a download link to the latest version of the plugin. It has some information on how ZBrush works with Scale. It has the basic usage, and then it also has the extended functionality just kind of describing what all the buttons do inside the plugin. Now, I created this plugin to mainly alleviate some of the items that I run into when dealing with scan data and scale inside of ZBrush. So it's just automated some of the processes I normally do, and it's just made it a little more user-friendly to allow me to scale and size things accordingly. So to start off, I just have some scan data here of a boot, and I roughly know the size of this boot. So this boot was an eight and a half, and I know that it's roughly 10 inches from the front to the back of the heel. So I've just generated this scan data through photogrammetry, and then I've just exported that out and imported it into ZBrush here. So the main thing you wanna know before you use Scale Master is a rough size of your object. So I know it's roughly 10 inches from that front to the heel. After you have that rough size you know, in your mind, you can now come over here and click this Set Scene Scale button. And what this is going to do, it's going to look at that model file and it's gonna give you the generic units. So this generic units of this model here is 4.43 by 13.91 by 9.69. So that's pretty much reading inches. So I exported this model out of an application that had its environment sent to inches. Now after you have that idea of what the size of your model is, you're now going to get a few choices to select from. So the one I'm looking for here, for this model here, is this 4.43 by 13.91 by 9.69 inches. And I'm just going to come over here and click this. And when you click this, what's going to happen is Scale Master is going to take whatever value you selected, and it's going to convert those generic units into millimeters. And once it's in this millimeters, it's now set a standard inside of ZBrush. So any file you run through Scale Master will be converted to this millimeter format. And now when you import or append another file that has been modified with Scale Master, it should come over at that correct size. Now to check the size of my boot here and the units, I can come over to the sliders to subtool here and simply click this. And you see it's going to give me those values. So you can see here is that 9.68, which should be the dimension from that front of the toe here to the back of the heel. So that's roughly the size of that boot, so that's probably correct in the scan data there. And now I have that set inside of ZBrush. Now if I wanna see what another value would be in a different unit, I can come over here and just simply select a new unit, so say like millimeters, and then do the slider to subtool size. And now I'm gonna get the size of the mesh here in those millimeter units. So this is a little handy functionality here to come through and simply select the units you want and then click slider to subtool size and it's gonna give you the model in those units. Now, after you have these units kind of set up, so my boot I know is in that inch format, I now have some extended functionality that I can use inside the tool. So I can resize my subtool here. So I know that right now it's nine, but let's say I want it to be 10. So I'm gonna first make sure this ratio slider is on, I'm gonna make sure I'm in that inch unit. I'm gonna change my Z here to 10 and then hit enter. And then I'm just going to click resize subtool just going to take that model and now it's going to resize it. So now if I do that sliders to subtool size here, you can see my Z value there will be back to that 10. Now sliders inside of ZBrush have a great amount of precision. So if you ever see a number like this, where it's 9.9999996, this is just based on the precision inside of ZBrush. So this should read 10 if you export this out. So now I've just taken that boot there and I've now resized it. So 10 inches from the front of the toe to the back of that heel. Now let's say I want to add a helper in here. So say I need to model something with this boot or I just wanna see what that one inch unit would be next to the boot here. So I can simply make sure I have that inch selected again and then I can use this one unit helper. This is just gonna generate a one unit helper based on the unit you have selected up top. So if I wanna make a one inch by one inch helper, I just make sure inch is on, click one unit helper and this is going to append a new helper to my file here and this is a one inch by one inch cube. If I wanna see a one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter cube, I can select that one, do this one unit helper, and now I'm going to get a one centimeter helper in the scene there. So just a little functionality there if you need to add a helper to start modeling from or just to see the size relation of one unit compared to your entire model.
Now, in addition to just adding a one unit helper, you can also make a new subtool based on any size you want. So I can turn off this ratio here and I can go back to inches. And let's say I wanna make a two inch by three inch by one inch cube here. And I can just have those selected, do new subtool. And now I'm going to get a new subtool generated with that value. Now, if I generated this through the functionality here, you'll also notice that it's going to name that subtool correctly. So you can see I have a new subtool and it's also given me the dimensions here. So that two inches by three inches by one inches. So if you do any of the new helper or new subtool, it will also name that subtool based on the size you have selected. Now let's say I wanna resize this cube here that I just generated to now be two by three by one centimeters instead of inches. I can just change my unit value to centimeters, make sure that all these values are still correct, and just click resize subtool. And now I've just simply resized that subtool to that value. Now, in addition to just resizing single subtools, you can also resize all the subtools in your scene. So I'm just gonna grab a new model. So I'm gonna open Lightbox here and go to the tool palette, and I'm just gonna grab the demo soldier and then just bring him in. Now the demo soldier was created inside of ZBrush, so he doesn't really have any scale or anything you can really relate to. So I can go over to the set scene scale here and just click this. And I'm not just gonna click a unit value basically I wanna work in. So his generic units are 5.44 by 7.91 by 1.45. So I'm gonna go with inches for him as well. So I'm just gonna come over here and select this one here. So roughly making him about eight inches tall. So I'm just gonna click that. And that's gonna take his generic units there and convert them to millimeters. And so now he'll have the correct millimeter height from the top of his head to the bottom of his toes, but it's still gonna give you that value of him in inches. So now let's say I wanna resize him to say five inches tall instead of 7.9. So I'm gonna come over here and turn on the ratio slider here. I'm gonna do that sliders to subtool size, just to make sure they update correctly. I'm gonna come over to the Y here and I'm gonna type in five. And then now I wanna resize all his subtools, not just his body by itself. So I'm gonna make sure I have this all button on, and then I'm gonna click resize subtool. And what this is going to do, it's going to resize his body down so it's five inches tall, and then it's gonna resize everything else proportionally to that change. So let's come over here and click resize subtool. And you see now he's gonna be resized down, and if I do that update size slider again, you can see now he's gonna be registered as that five inches from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Now let's say I don't have a subtool, it's gonna give me a good estimate of the bounding box of the model. So let's go through and let's, let's say I just delete his body here. And so now I just have this. So I wanna make the top of the model here to be eight inches from this top of the model to the bottom of the shoe. Well right now, all the subtools I have are falling inside of that bounding box. So I need a way to resize the entire model based on the outer dimensions. So what we can do inside the Scale Master plugin here is we can first generate this bounding box subtool. And this is going to look at all the subtools your model is made of, and it's gonna generate a bounding box around all of them. So I'm just gonna come over here and click New Bounding Box Subtool. And after this is created, I can turn on Transparency and turn off Ghost. And you see now I'm going to have a bounding box subtool that's sized around all those parts of my mesh. So now I can come through and I can resize my model based around this bounding box. So I can come back to the sliders to subtool size here, and this is going to give me those dimensions of that bounding box. So now I just want to make him eight inches tall. So I'm gonna come over here and in the Y value here, I'm gonna type in eight and hit enter. And he's gonna update the other values there. And then I'm gonna do resize subtool and make sure I have all on. This is now going to resize everything. And it's gonna be using that bounding box as our basis of the resizing. And if this completes, you're gonna get something like this. So you can see the bounding box has been sized. And if I do the sliders to subtool size again, you can see it's still holding that eight inches. And I can just disable that or delete that bounding box. And now I have my model here in its entirety sized to be eight inches from the top of the goggles here to the bottom of the feet. So just a little functionality there that you can do using a bounding box to resize all your subtools in your scene. Now, after you have your model set up to the size you want, now you can export this model back out easily to different generic units. So the Scale Master went through and it resized everything from millimeters. So if I wanna bring this model back into the inches environment, I come over here and just make sure I have my unit value set to inches, then I can just click export to unit scale. It's gonna take the model, that is in millimeters, it's gonna do the conversion to inches and it's gonna generate a new OBJ file with those generic units set up for inches. So now you can import that model back into an inch environment and it should come over at the correct size. 
Now, if you want to export out all your subtools, you can do that as well. You just need to come over here and toggle this all button and then click export to unit scale. And it'll go through and export all your subtools out and they should all retain that scale that you have selected. So that is the quick rundown on the Scale Master plugin. Hope that helps.